So many people have had games, books, and movies spoiled for them. Ah, isn't that terrible? Spoilers are the bane of the existence of many a great story. Isn't that right? That might have been what you've heard, but spoiler warning, context is key. And before we dive into this, be sure to get subscribed because I'm Super Derek. I make a bunch of thoughtful and thought-provoking videos for gamers who love RPGs and love going down weird, random, literary rabbit holes like this one. Spoilers are important to reviewers like myself. Nobody wants to be spoiled. You know, I've been accused of spoiling many games before in the past. It kinda comes with the territory. I try to avoid spoiling games the best I can, lest I incur the wrath of angry commenters. But what even is a spoiler in the first place? Is it as simple as me telling you something about a game that you would not have known otherwise without having first played the game? Because if that's the case, then spoiling is sort of tantamount to what I do as a reviewer. Am I spoiling for you whether or not a game is worth your time, or whether or not it's any good or not? Am I spoiling you by telling you the basic premise of the game? Well, what even can be spoiled anyway? The story of a game seems to be pretty unanimously agreed upon. You don't want to spoil the story. Can you spoil action sequences in a game or in a movie? How about boss battles? Which boss battles? Final boss battles or just mid-boss battles? What kind of things can be spoiled by a review? How about music? Can the music of a game be spoiled? I have been accused of spoiling the music of a video game before. That's a true story. And has spoiler culture gone too far? This whole idea of don't spoil the game for me, don't spoil the movie for me. Are spoilers actually all that bad? Well, let's start examining that premise that spoilers ruin or spoil the experience. In order to examine this, we're going to talk about some scientific stuff about why spoilers might not actually be all that bad, followed by some anecdotes, and I'm going to even give you a test that you can try at home for yourself to see if a spoiler ruins the experience. But be careful, because there's a twist at the end of this video, and you need to look out for it. Professor Nicholas Christenfield of the University of California recently conducted a study on the effects of spoilers on the enjoyment of readers of a story. I'll link to that study down in the description, but I'll go ahead and spoil that for you now by letting you know that people tended to enjoy stories more when spoiled. And even halfway through a story, people tended to rate their enjoyment of that story higher if they had been spoiled than if they had not been. The hypothesis behind why this is is that it helps increase your perceptual fluency or the fluency uh, which you can perceive the things happening in the story. How well they see the puzzle pieces fit together. There's one specific M. Night Shyamalan film that has a pretty well-known plot twist at the end. Just one of his videos though. And re-watching it after having seen the film lets you see all the extra details that you hadn't seen prior. Does this kill your enjoyment of the film? Not necessarily. Your perceptual fluency has actually improved with the knowledge of how that film ends. Now you know that Bruce Willis and this helps you see all the hints and all the extra details that others could not catch the first time through. Your enjoyment of the film may actually have been better the second time having watched it. James Cameron's 1997 film Titanic was the highest grossing film of all time for a short while. But why would people go to see a movie called The Titanic when they know how it's surely going to end. As it turns out, people want to see the how and the why, not the what. They want to see the side stories. They want to see the love story. They want to see the French girl drawings. They want to see Leonardo DiCaprio get sent back in time to kill John Connor. I mean, to kill the iceberg. I mean, to kill everyone. Can fan theories be spoiled? What can be spoiled anyway? For a more personal anecdote, I was a pretty weird kid. I still am, but I was pretty weird then too. R.I.P. Mitch. And I would spoil new books for myself. I would read one page right in the middle of the book before I would even start reading the rest of the book. And I would also read the final page of a book. Why would I do this? I already spoiled that for you. I was a weird kid. I specifically remember doing this for George Orwell's 1984 as well as Pierce Anthony's Xanth books, which are a hard recommend. The Xanth series are so good. Pierce Anthony, very punny fellow. And these books are some of my favorites even to this day. Now what I found when I would read these random pages is that I couldn't really make heads or tails of what was going on. None of it would really stick. I had no context for what was going on. During my read through, I would try to recognize which page it was that I had read in advance, but invariably I almost could never do it. Sometimes things would 
feel kind of familiar, but I could never quite pinpoint which page it was. It also held no predictive power. I couldn't tell what was going to happen based on having read that page at the middle or the end of the book. Now, by the time I get to the final page, I knew that was the final page, so I would have that sense of familiarity, but what is it that kept these two pages from spoiling the entire book for me? A big part of it is that by the time I got to the middle page or the end page, I had already forgotten pretty much entirely what I had read until it was too late to matter. Nothing that I had read affected my ability to enjoy the book. Nothing actually changed at all until I got to the end when I had that little sense of familiarity. Like having seen a long lost friend, oh yeah, I haven't seen you in days. It didn't give me enough information to comprehend what was going on or why, say at the end of 1984, Winston Context is the key to whether or not something can be a spoiler. Now the implication of this is that reviewers and trailers must walk a pretty thin tightrope to not spoil too much context. Trailers and reviews of sequels are especially tricky because of this because the previous games provide you with enough context that is needed to make the other stuff a spoiler. Sequel trailers and reviews pretty much are inherently full of spoilers and there's not much way around that. In addition to that, spoilers for long running book series can be especially spoilery. Famously, members of Anonymous spoiled a plot twist at the end of the Harry Potter books by going into bookstores back when they still existed and announcing that <laughs> That seemed, at the time, like a really huge spoiler, and I suppose to an extent that it kind of is. However, it's not until you actually read the books and you get to that point that you realize that that's not even the real twist that they spoiled. In hindsight, the who and the what wasn't nearly as important as the how and the why, which was the real twist the entire time. Now here's the experiment for you to try at home. I want you to be the weird kid for a minute. Spoil the book for yourself. Read a middle page, just any page randomly in the middle of the book, and then read the final page at the very end of the book. Then go back and reread it. Read the whole novel from start to finish. And maybe even try the game where you try to spot which page it was that you read and see if it held any predictive power. Did that spoil the book for you at all? And once you've done that, come back here and report to me how it turned out. Do you feel spoiled? And I have to ask if you feel spoiled, not whether you were spoiled, because at the end of the day, isn't that the whole point of avoiding spoilers? The feeling of having that first time experience robbed from you in some way? Now earlier in the video, I told you what was going to be in this video. In fact, I've been spoiling this entire video as we've been going in case you haven't noticed. But that isn't the twist that I warned you about at the beginning of the video. Has this ruined your enjoyment of this video so far? Or were you looking forward to those things that I had mentioned prior? And are you still curious about what that possible twist could be at the end of this video? And if you are looking forward to it, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now I have reviewed over a hundred RPGs which are a lot like books in a lot of ways, and their reliance upon storytelling and the narrative, and I'm given the difficult task of telling you enough, but not too much, about the story of the game. Enough to get you interested without telling you so much that it spoils you. I need to walk the tightrope of showing you enough gameplay without showing you too much context. But the real question is, should I have to? Context is key. I even told you this in the title. Context is key to this entire spoiler situation. Now, if I show you this picture, you know who it is because you're a gamer. You know what role they play. You have prior knowledge. You have context that this is the final boss of Super Mario Brothers 1. This sort of information could be a spoiler because you know. Now, if you weren't a gamer, though, and I didn't tell you who he was, is it still a spoiler to show you that picture? Would you know that he's the final boss? Is the game now spoiled? If I showed this same picture to my two-year-old nephew who doesn't know who Mario is, he doesn't know who Koopa is, honestly, he probably doesn't even know who I am if I'm being honest with myself. Is that a spoiler for him? If I show him this picture, did I spoil Super Mario Bros. 1? With this picture, you have the context he does not. If a spoiler is revealed in a video but no context was given, did it in fact spoil a game? It's Schrodinger's spoiler. It's not until you have the context to observe the spoiler that it actually becomes a spoiler. 
If you have no context, there's no spoiler. But if you do have context, there is a spoiler. So hypothetically, if you watched an old review of mine or someone else's and then wrote a snarky comment, hey, nice boss reveal at the 2 minute 30 mark, what a spoiler, who was the real spoiler in this situation? The YouTuber for using a video clip without the context, or you for providing that context? And that was the twist. You were the real spoiler the entire time. But it's okay, because you likely improved someone's enjoyment of the game in the process. And that's the second spoiler. I'm Super Dark. Please be sure to get subscribed because I make thoughtful and thought provoking videos for gamers who love role playing games. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.